door. You got the ASMR okay, going. Guys. All right, you're, 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 relax, relax, relax. All right, everybody ready? You good? You ready? Let's get it. Man, it's also like podcast, most authentic, most organic podcast. That's, that doesn't need, that one doesn't need to be on. No, yeah, nah. Every, we're fucked it up. Did we do? Everybody got to redo? Everybody got to redo? Redo, 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 redo. <laughs> All right. Everybody good. It's also like podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Back again with another episode on a Monday. We're trying to give you guys the gems, give you guys the quotes, and tell tell you guys about a certain DJ, comedian, actor, yeah. father. Yes. Mr. Jay Valentino in the house, baby. Let's go. Let's man. go. Appreciate you guys. Man, thank you for making the time on a Saturday morning. Of course, man. I love what you got going on, bro. Congrats to you guys. <sighs> thank you, bro. Thank you. We, we, we just trying to be like you. Oh, stop. Trying to... You don't want to be this tall, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. Look at me. Man, I had to look up when you walked in. <laughs> Man, but thank you for making the time again, especially on a weekend when I know you have a millions of things to do. The way your career is going, the way your platforms are going, if if no one yet has has seen you, it's because they don't have a phone. <laughs> right. It's because they don't have some sort of platform. They don't have a, some sort of social media. But... Man, give us a little background. What city? I, I know you're here from L.A., but specifically what part of L.A.? I was uh, born and raised in Los Angeles, anywhere from Lincoln Heights to Southgate, Bell Gardens. And after that, my mom decided to move us to Orange County. That was 1997. Yeah. Man. So half my life L.A., half my life O.C. What do you prefer better now? Uh, I'm, I'm Kobe with it, man. Rest in peace, Kobe. I, I love L.A., rep L.A., will do anything for L.A., but I like to rest my head in O.C. <laughs> it's a lot calmer? It's chill, man. It's very family-oriented, and I'm closer to my son. Mm. So if it was up to me, I'd live in L.A. County for sure because of everything that I do, all of entertainment out here. But, right. But uh, O.C. is where I'm at at the moment, and, yeah, man, I'm enjoying it. Would, would you ever be, like, one of those people that says, I'm tired of L.A., I'm going to Texas? No, no, I, no. What? No, nah, man, I'm not weird, man. I'm playing, I'm playing. Shout out to all the people in Texas, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston. What's up? You've been touring because I know that you guys just went not too long ago, right? Yes, yes. We, we're everywhere, man. Um, I'm doing my own stuff as well now. More than ever, I'm trying to put, uh, produce my own shows as well. Man. And um, I'm going to start testing the waters, bro. I'm going to start testing the waters in Texas, you know, produce my own shows in Texas, Chi-Town, and anywhere else uh, man, that's, that's calling for it, man. That's crazy. Before we get into everything that's happening now, we got to get into how this character, this phenom came to be. Right. So were you, have you always been a happy dude, a happy, energetic, entertaining type of dude, like throughout high school or like, yeah, you know what? I have been, um, I always, and I'm grateful for that because I understand that depression is real and yeah. I've dealt with that before too. And I'm kind of, mm. you know, I've gone through it lately, actually after the pandemic, I think it messed up a lot of people, you know? Hell yeah. So for me, coping with it is exercising, but Yes, for the most part, yes. Thank God, man, because I know for a lot of people, it's not the same situation. Most definitely, because it it takes us a little bit of time to realize who we are, how we can be, and who we really could be. Like, it's trying to be that outspoken, loud, funny, even confident dude. I mean, sometimes that's like, ah, no, he's out of control, or oh, you got to make sure you calm down. But now right. it's something that people look up to, people that are like, man, I wish I had your confidence. Right. I wish I was able to step on stage just like you do and, and entertain people or even get to talk to people. Right. Because for people that don't know, DJing was the first thing that you started with. Correct. Correct. I mean, I've always, I guess, and I say this lightly because comedy is subjective. To me, I've always been funny. Yeah. But DJing, uh, I found the love for it at 14. Um, my buddy got a, a pair of turntables in the hood. And back then, if you got something luxurious like that in the hood, it was a big deal. <laughs> oh, you got a Nintendo? Damn, dog. <laughs> but um, got a pair of turntables, and I went over his house once, and I never let go, man. I fell in love, man. What was, what was that? During that time, what was the music that you were playing? Hip-hop. Hip-hop. It was mm. a Wu-Tang at the time, Biggie, Pac, all that. Yeah. Man. But uh, your mom is also from here, too, your parents? No, my mom's uh, from Guatemala. From Guatemala. Mm. Yeah. I'm not full Mexican. Half. She's Guatemalan and Cuban. 
Ooh. And my dad's from Guadalajara, Jalisco. So, damn. So, yeah. tiene, you have sangre. Yeah, Central fina. American and Mexican. Yeah, oh, it, was, muy fina. it was tough growing up, dog. I wasn't Mexican enough for the Mexicans. In Guatemala. I'm just saying, <laughs> nobody cared. I was always Mexican to everybody. It's just the, the color of our skin. I didn't know that I was Central American until my buddies came over to my house one day and they were like, why are you eating black beans and platanos, dog? That shit's weird, dog. What the fuck? Why are you mixing that sweet shit with fucking beans, dog? Black <laughs> beans? I'm like, this shit's normal. Nah, dog, it's your mom, dog. She's Central American or whatever, or Cuban, whatever she is. I was like, I didn't even know about, like, Latino races, the differences. And yeah. that's when I found out my boys pointed it out. Man, but is your mom also, who is, your mom is also, like, a funny character, right? She she has a personality for oh, sure. Man. She lights up a room, you know, and she's four foot eleven, but her personality is, like, 6'4". She's always been the management, the manager at, at any company that, that she worked at. You know, she did, she worked at a... She managed uh, hotels for a long time, for like 25 years, housekeeping departments. Yeah. yeah. Well, she started off cleaning rooms, dog. Yeah. So, yeah, cleaning 16 rooms a day to feed your kids. Single mom, four kids. Yeah. Four kids. Yeah. What are you, the oldest? The youngest. The youngest. Yeah. El más rebelde. Uh, I was definitely, I felt like more like uh, like an only child because my sister's three years older. My brother's, uh, my older brother's six years older and the oldest one, 10 years older. So they had their own little royal going on. I was always in the cut, yeah. you know, maybe because that's why I, I spazzed out as a comedian at school because I didn't get that attention at home. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> Do people start crying this early? No, honestly, bro, because I didn't get the love at home. I got it from other. <laughs> it, and that's one of the things I've, we said it before, what it's. It goes hand in hand, right? The people that act out is because, you know, they're trying to get, they're trying to be seen by people, you know, in a, right. in a deeper aspect. And the people that are like bullies is because, you know, they may be going through something at home. So you growing up with your brothers and sisters, I know you, I know you just said that, you know, it felt like a only child, but how were you growing up? Were you like, was there something missing or did you have all the love that you needed? Like, um, my dad, you know, he was in the, he was a peekaboo dad. You know, he was, he would pop up every now and then. Hey, what's up? You want to go out? And I'd be all happy. He'd take me out to eat, yeah. you know, uh, amusement parks here and there. Yosemite park was, that was, that was a big deal back then. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, you know, he wasn't that present for sure. Man. So kind of, it's a tough one, right? Growing up, but I'm sure because being who you are, like, just going, outgoing, lighting up the room. How you said, your mom lit up the room. But I know you know now that you also light up a room. I like to think so, yeah. So starting with DJs, how was that first gig you ever did? Oh, Talk I sucked, bro. I sucked. I sucked, Talk us through it, man. Yeah, what was it, a quinceanera, a I, I bombed, dog. I bombed. It was a, a high school party. It was like fi I was like 15 years old. My speakers were like not DJ speakers. They were made out of wood and shit. You know, my headphones were freaking like the ones that just, you know, they're plastic and they're all small. Um, my my vinyl was, I had some bangers, but I was, I didn't know what to play. But, and people were like, hey, why are you playing this shit, dog? I'm like, this is dope. This is Ice Cube, okay? <laughs> yeah, but it's not one of his hits. <laughs> so, this one's the one that didn't make the album. Yeah, this is the one. That, yeah, this is an album filler. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I didn't do that good. Yeah, just like anything else, you don't start off amazing. So how do you keep? going what makes you keep going what what makes you fall in love with the music and the entertainment side of it because at that point you're becoming an entertainer you're lighting up the room you're controlling the mood of the room right like you're at a party quinceanera no one's dancing and then bam viene la musica and then ah vente, mama. um i thankfully for me you know i was a strip club dj for 18 years so <laughs> the mc thing comes natural to me now you know when you when you're spending 30 hours plus a week on the microphone you know, hopefully you know how to rock it. So the Maestro de Ceremonia, that helps a lot. And, of course, your music selection and all that other stuff in yeah. the technical side, of course. But my mom always has a phrase about me. Be like, no, ese Valentino despierta muertos. So, yeah, I like to go in there and, and lift up the room, you know. Yeah. Again, if there, a lot of people are naturally introverted, you know. Most yeah. people, I want to say, are more introverted than, than others. For sure. So I like to go in there and, like, really break that barrier and get on the mic and point people out, talk to them, you know, be intimate with them, engage with them, yeah. and then bring them in with the music. Did you have to break that within yourself too? or? Oh, yeah, totally, for sure. Because 
when I first started script, uh, DJing at the strip club, I thought I was going to go in there and kill it. Oh, I have a good personality. I'm going to go in there and kill it. Bam. I got behind the mic. I was like, uh, here she is. Uh, sh she has daddy issues and cinnamon song one. <laughs> Can I get a water, please? <laughs> You gotta get anybody got a water? <laughs> I think they're behind the bar, dog. <laughs> We're not filming at a strip club, guys. That's one thing. <laughs> Man, so but it was the, the experience, experiencia. Mm -hmm. Getting it from there. When do you tie in the comedic side? When do you tie in, hey, I can be more than just a DJ ent entertainer. I can actually get behind and, and make these videos. Because to my understanding, you didn't go full force on Instagram until after you became a father. Correct. Yeah. yeah you did some research, huh? I who, tried to. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Vlad TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I read that a part, part of you where, I mean, you were, again, you have a DJ resume for X amount of, of years already. But going into social media during the time that you did, it wasn't, it wasn't also like, easy. It wasn't popular at the time. Oh. No. Um, I got into it. Yes. I had a web show. I did podcasting before podcasting was a, ever yeah. a thing. From 2010 to 2015, I had a show called JuiceTVOC.com. <laughs> and we streamed it on a thing called Ustream. That platform only lasted about five years. And it yeah. had its run. We had we did great. We did great. Yeah. We had, uh, you know, big artists. And we had Metal World Peace on there. We had Afro Man. Oh, I'm not name shit. dropping, but these are the guests that I had. Yeah. You know, we had Felipe Esparza. Everybody. We had everybody on there. It's where comedy and music met. Yeah. And that's what I, that's all, I, all I've known. You started mixing them in. Yes, 100%. And that had its run for five years. And when that came to an end, I was kind of losing interest in it because my platform wasn't growing. And that was, a, you know, at the end of the day, we want to grow. And um, I was putting comedy on the back burner. You know, I thought that just having the comedians around was enough. Like, nah, that's cool. Mm. But I'm not being, I'm not delivering the entertainment. So mm. I concluded that in the following week, I went in, I went all in on skits. And I went from like doing, you know, six comments a video. And, I, they weren't comedy videos. And like, you know, 200 views to the yeah. first video hitting like 80,000 views with like 300 comments. I was like. This is it. That yeah. Kisoy. This is it. Yeah. Isn't it? That's a funny thing. And it's a crazy thing when you when you start going through it where you get one video that just blows up. And, like, I remember our first one, the blow up for me was like, damn, 20,000 views? What the that's fuck? That's great. It's still like, great. That's yeah, crazy. It's great. Yeah. And I still tell people, I was like, yo, like, you have to, you start. You're going to probably post 10 videos and maybe the 10 no pega. Yeah. But maybe the 11 does. Or maybe right. the 15 does. But how do you know it's going to ever blow up if you're not posting? Right. And it's the consistency, right? You're you're po you're putting one video per day. Like before, when we started, I was dropping three videos a day and four and five. Oh, you can bring the. Oh, no, no se asusten, no se asusten. Oh, yeah, we're not we're thank not professional you, here. Appreciate we're not professional oh, here. There you go. He knows I'm thirsty. We're not professional oh, here. Look at these cups, though, man. Oh. What? Zoom in, Jose. Zoom, can you zoom in can on that? Zoom one? in on that real quick. Here you go. You on get the that? on the camera. On the camera. Zoom in on there. If you don't brand yourself, nobody else will. Look at that. Cute ass Dang. fool. What? Get it? Get it? <laughs> but yeah, when when we started, when we started on there, it was like, yo, like we started with three three videos a day. Maybe one of them is gonna hit. Maybe. Right. And now, as you progress, now you're like, okay. We have a system. Right. right now, we have certain times. We have certain days, and you know, you find what works. But in order for it, for in order for us to find what worked, shit, we had to go like three years. <laughs> right. Right. One hundred percent. So for you. When did you realize, hey, this is what works or this is what's working for me? How was your posting schedule? How was your your comedy schedule? Like, take us through that. I think at the time it was it was quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays it's quality and quantity. Yeah. And um, back then I used to post like three times a week, three videos, three videos a week, which is still, you know, a good amount. Yeah. And um, the niche that really helped me, you know, blow up and take it to the next level was translating music. You know, it would be from Spanish to English or vice versa. Uh, the first video that did really well for me that took me to that next level was me translating La Chona, which is, I think, in 2015, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Man. And then from there, it's just, okay, I got something here. And, of course, I never excluded my mom. Me and my mom, I've always been a force as well, and, us, uh, and along with other collabs. But the main thing was my mom videos and the translation. Isn't that a beautiful thing, working with your mom like that? I, lo I love it. Sometimes, like sometimes. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, because, like... When people watch your videos, like you, 
you collab with other people. Obviously, one of one of your good friends, best friends, Concrete, um, with and other com- comedians and other actors. But then you see the ones with your mom, and it's like, man, having that duo, having that relationship of a, not just work wise, but this is like, as he's on alpha camera, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, it's pretty organic. It's pretty organic. Yes, that's exactly how we are. It's it's natural. So how do you, you feel know? when like videos like that with your mom pop off? Oh, I mean, I'm proud, bro. It makes me proud, you know, because you know, once again, it's comedy subjective. You don't know what it's gonna do. What yeah. I find funny, you don't find funny, and vice versa. So when it pops off, I'm like, heck yeah. And when you get those comments, it's relatable. My mom's like that. Your mom reminds me of my mom. And now she's getting recognized in public <laughs> in La Ros or in El Marshalls. One lady went up to her, why are you starving at Marshalls if you're famous? She's like, hey, I'm always going to say mommy and I'm not famous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're famous? Or- I, that's a good question. That's a good question. Like, what's the weirdest place you've gotten recognized at? Um, where is the weirdest place I've gotten recognized at? The strip club. No, I'm <laughs> no, I don't go there unless I'm gonna make money. Pay up. Um, where is it? I think it was. I don't. You know, this brings me back to the first time I got recognized. I was like at 10, 12 k followers, and it was in Pomona at a Norgue. No, no, it was a Cardenas. It was a Cardenas market. The lady's like, "Aren't you Jay Valentina?" I was like, "Yes, <laughs> yes, I am." I like to pay for these tortillas. Unless you're gonna sponsor me, I'll tag you. No, 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 no. Tienes que pagar. Tienes que pagar. Man, and now with so many, so many, so many millions of views later, so many shows later, how does your DJing, your online uh, skits translate to your standup and to being now hosting shows? Because you went on tour, you're going on tour. Even that is a whole different monster, right? Like. Comedy is a rawest form of uh, stand up comedy is a rawest form of comedy. Stand up comedy is you'll know if you're you'll know if you're funny at that point or not. Right, right away, right away, and the crowd will let you know. I don't. They don't care if you're Kevin Hart or Adam Sandler. If it's not funny, it's not funny. And um, it's uh, it's been a crazy transition, but it's easier said than done to get out because people will be people will be like Valentino, why don't you just get the video material that you have and put it into your stand up? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, you try it. <laughs> it's easier said than done. Um, putting everything in a comedic form and stand up is easier said than done. And uh, but I've been able to do it, and I'm working on it, and it's been great so far, man. Of course, you have your bombs here and there, but that's just a part of the game. So when you bomb that hard during the show, what's your train of thought? How do you get back up from that? I get inspired from my L's, but yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you and say I don't curl up in a corner and rock back and forth in the dark, dog. Of course, yeah. I go through it. Of course, but I, it inspires me. I'm like, okay, I gotta go back to the drawing board. I got to go back to the drawing board. But, you know, what inspires me and keeps me happy, uh, you know, like content is that I hear that other comics that are very established still have their times, mm-hmm. their their nights, yeah. and they go back to the drawing board. And they've been doing it for 15 years. Did you ever imagine a young Valentino being on stage now? Hosting shows, touring? In the back of my mind, yeah. But I wasn't ready to face my fears for a while. Mm. And that's what it's about, facing fears. People that- run around, People want to run away. Yeah, bro. Like last year, I wasn't uncomfortable or nervous one time. If you're not uncomfortable or nervous, I don't think you're doing shit that make that's that's gonna make you grow. When did you realize that? This year, this year that I'm I'm, I'm doing uncomfortable shit all the time, going to going to the gym five times a week, and going on stage three four times a week. You know, yeah, crazy. You know. I don't post it all the time. I don't post everything I do. Yeah. I'll be at a restaurant in front of old white people. You know what I mean? I'm trying to like make them laugh. And sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. Is there a certain is there a certain time where you practice or a certain group of people that you practice your your skits with, your comedy with, and like before you go on stage, or is this raw? No, man, it's just me most of the time. I'll run it through a couple of my boys here and there, but mm-hmm. most of the time it's just it's a lonely sport. It's like boxing. <laughs> Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I try to collab and write with people, but for the most part, it's mainly me doing all the writing and performing and practicing and yeah. me co-signing, you know, putting the stamp on it. I think that's pretty funny. I'm going to try it. And So I'm sure you believe in that phrase of like, I know what's best. I know what works for me and I know what's what's best for me. I don't think no one, I, no one else can have, can know about it. Like I have an amazing group of friends. I have an amazing, amazing team, but I know what works for me. Right. I know at the end of the day, this is for me. And I know it like I, I'm the only one that has this vision. I've heard it before where it's like 
you you're the only one that can see the dream the way you see it. No one right. else can. Right. You see your vision in your career a certain way, and you can tell it to people. But in order for them to realize or see it the way you do, I don't think it'll ever it will ever happen. Right. right. I think so. But through with your career, because again, you're so you're a man of many, of many hats. Mm -hmm. You have the entertaining side, which it corresponds with everything. But then you have you bring people together through music. You yes. bring people together through laughing. And I actually, see, I did, I did a little bit of homework, bro. I li did a little <laughs> bit of homework where um, you had said something one time in an interview. And I'll tell you exactly what you said. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. This guy's good. No wonder you guys work with him. <laughs> wow. Wow. It, it, you said, if you're not laughing, you're not living. Yeah. 100%. Elaborate on that, por favor. If you're not laughing, you're not, you're not living, man. I mean, bro, that's releasing endorphins is what it's all about, you know? Yeah. Most girls go for the funny guy, you know? it's It makes you feel good. It's in, it, it's an emotion. Yeah. It makes your heart feel warm, you know? I draw to the, I draw, I tend to draw to people that make me happy. And most of the time, that's through laughter. Mm. So, yes, 100%. Yeah, it Definitely, you can cure a lot of a lot of things with laughter. You can have a shit day. You can have a hard day. You can have, man, just a ho horrible moment. But right. someone makes you laugh, and like, man, those been the best comments, man, bro. My mom just passed away from cancer. Your videos keep me uplifted. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. If if that that that's it, that's like my like yeah. that right there is the biggest payoff, like. Right there. You can't put you can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on that. That's the there's there's moments definitely where it's just like, you know what? There's moments definitely where we work for for a better living, right? For a better life, for our family, for our, ourselves. Obviously, in order for that to happen or be a little bit comfortable, we need money, right? It it goes with it, but I always tell people like sometimes money can't buy this. No, in these man. moments like, you know, maybe have you had a moment yet when you're on stage and you just look out to the crowd and be like, damn. I'm doing oh, yeah, this. for sure, bro. For sure. Yeah. And it's it's very surreal. Like what? Uh, do you remember when's the last time you had it or when's when's the like, damn, I made a moment for you? It, I don't like to say I made it because there's uh, levels there's, to everything. Correct. You know what I mean? But right. one of them was, like, definitely, like, when me and the guys, Los Toxicos, me, Jerry Garcia, Jesus Sepulveda, Concrete, we uh, sold out um, El Farrayon in Linwood. Ooh. That was 700 people. Dang. And I opened up the show and I hosted the show. And it felt good, man, because I prepared a lot, too. And I went out there and lit up the crowd and... That felt great, man. It was really good. I felt comfortable too. That that was a big deal too. Man, I think you, you you get those you get those moments. You get those you get you get those moments, and you get you get that time where you're like a, a little reminder. I'm doing it. I'm really I'm doing what I'm meant to do. I'm I'm here where where I was supposed to be, and this is a reminder of like all the struggle, all the hard moments you've been going through. Maybe not blowing up, maybe not good numbers, but this is the like, hey, here you go. I mean, let me remind you how good you're really doing. Right. And sometimes you have to get it from the external, you know, because we're all our own worst critics. We're all, we all get in our head, dog. Yeah. Like, damn, did she really like me? Nah, dog. She thought you were too short, huh? Now, like, you get in your own head. So you got to remind yourself that, yeah, you're doing something, man. You're not, I like to, I don't, I'm not, competition doesn't drive me. I just want to be better than I was yesterday. That's it. Ooh. I have horse blinders, bro. I don't see anything. People are all like, oh, you do social media. I want to do it, but there's a lot of competition. I'm like, yo, who gives a fuck about competition? What do you, nice. Who are you comparing yourself to, bro? Yeah. You just got to be better than yesterday. Fuck yeah. all that. Yeah, and, and my, that's my ADD helps with that. I don't, I don't see anything or pay attention to anything. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the things where it just it prevents people from doing what they want to do, which is start. In whatever they do, whether it's a business, social media, a sport, the Anything. gym, it's comparison. Mm, it's the thief of it's the thief of joy. Yes, correct. I can't I can't go at this time because that's the hour of of uh, these big ass people that go to the gym. I'm not strong enough. I can't work out with you because I'm not strong enough. Mm. I can't hang out with you because I don't have the numbers to hang out with you. Mm. It's like, dude, we all start somewhere. Yeah. And what's the best thing you can ever do for yourself is show up for yourself. 
Mm. You owe it to yourself. I love that. You owe it to yourself, right? Because you're always going to have the people around you if you're surrounded by good people that want you to win. Like, bro, I believe in you. But if you don't believe in yourself. Yeah, that's where it starts. That's, that's where, where it starts. You know, it, I can't believe in you more than you believe in yourself. I always use the example. If your car is stranded on the side of the road and you're inside your car, cars are just going to pass by you. You know, cars are just going to pass by you. Yeah. If your car is stranded on the side of the road and you get out and you start pushing it, helping yourself. Yeah. People are going to pull over and start helping you as well. Ooh. You know what I mean? God helps those that help themselves if you believe in God or the universe. That's a, that's a huge, oh man, that's a huge part. You got to be willing to help yourself first before anybody else can come and help you. Bro. You know? I mean, there's a lot of people that want to collab and I'm open to collab with people, you know, but if, I, if I'm looking at their platform or what they're doing and they don't have anything yeah. going on already, like I'll inspire them with, you know, with, the, you know, a little text or, or words, but I got to see you moving, bro. You know what I mean? This is a moving train right here. Yeah. You know, you got to be moving to get on this train. Everybody got to be able to carry their own weight. Yeah. 100%. And, and, and like you, I'm, I'm sure with, in your career and your, your moment right now, like you get people that come up to you and, you know, they pitch you their, their best pitch. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm this, I got this, 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 but it's just like, all right, right now you're telling me this come Monday, come Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What are you doing? Bro, there's people that are like, you know, like the gym or anything or, uh, a 20 push-up challenge every day. Try doing 20 push-ups every day. Okay, cool. One day, three yeah. days, seven days. Oh, shit, the 10th day. I got to do 20 push-ups today. And Damn. then what, what happens? Uh, you know what? I won't do it. I'll do yeah, 40, 40 tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's easier said than done, man. Consistency is everything. And hard work beats talent when talent yeah. doesn't work. Is God damn. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that I'm sure you've seen, even people on podcasts. I mean... You know, we're all human. We're all, we all look at everything, you know, Great. there's comedians out there that I'm like, damn, you know what? And I'm really positive. I, I, I like to see every, everything on the positive side. Like, okay, man, like his comedy is not my type, mm -hmm. but I'm not mad at his work ethic at all. He yeah. has accumulated millions of followers. I'm not, I'm not, it's not my type of comedy, yeah. but I'm not mad at the hustle. That goes to show you right there, bro. There's people 10 times funnier than this guy, but this guy's putting in the work. Yeah. Can't and, be mad at that. And that's the thing, like, because... There's always going to be someone better than you, mm. someone more hardworking than you. There's always going to be someone that's in a better position than you. And you can't knock the hustle. You know, no. you don't know what they had to go through. You don't know what, how much they had to sacrifice. All you know and will know is how much you got to sacrifice, how much you got to do, how much work you got to put in. Because, again, the, right now it, it's okay to start. Everybody can start. And we'll go good for a, a week, a month. But, like, I, when people want to do podcasting, Hey, I want to do a pot. Okay, cool. I'm trying to get a 10 episode. No, no, no. Go for 25. Mm. There's a, there's actually a, like a little, uh, there's like a stigma or like people that did research. Everybody that starts a podcast, they don't, they never reach episode 10 because by five, six, they're already running out of things to do when they don't have a purpose behind it. I like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So before, yeah. So before we moved to, uh, to Fontana, I think I already had about like 22, 23 episodes in. And it was just a boom, going, going, going. And now it, that's why I say we never miss a Monday because no matter what happens throughout the week, the weekend, Monday at 5 p.m., there's an episode always out. Even it's, if I got to bust an all-nighter, if I got to, you know, not do anything on a Sunday because I need to make this happen, so be it. Even if you're crudo. Mm, <laughs> we know those days. We definitely know those days. Do you have, like, a Mount Rushmore of your, your favorite comedians from, like, any era? Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely Dave Chappelle, Joe Coy, Kevin Hart, Eddie Murphy. Oh, Eddie Murphy, underrated. Yeah, no, no he's he like for the people that know that Eddie Murphy outside of the movies. Right, right, right. Yeah, and then party that. all the time. <laughs> That's a song. Yeah, That's a jam. Um, do you? I I think I know where this is gonna go either way, but. Is there a comedian that you looked up to that you wanted to kind of replicate, like, the way he did it? Um, Kevin Hart-ish, you know? At the end of the day, we're all our own, you know, artists, Correct. our own people. Um, because he makes health a big part of his life, Ooh. you know? And that's easier said than done. It's, you know, we're Latinos. We grew up with junk food. 
who grew up with, you know, tortillas, arroz, arroz, tortillas, frijoles, frijoles meat, ten, you know, five times a week, you know, which is not good at all. Portions non-existent. You know I mean? And at the end of the day, you know, this is the only engine behind everything. This is what drove me here. This is what it's what's talking to when, you right now. When did uh when did health come into effect for you? I want to say like 24 years old, 24. I'm 41. Yeah, 24 years old. Uh, I started making a little bit of money at like 20, 21. So, you know, I thought beer every day and mariscos every day was it. And it was not, dog. I went from like 165 to like 190 in like six months. So after that, I saw myself I was like, yo, this isn't it. So I started, you know, running, cycling, Stairmaster, lifting weights. And uh, ever since, I, I pretty much never stopped. Yeah. What did, what, when you're working now, is that like your safe space now? Oh my God, it's everything, bro. Talk, it's, let's talk about that. Yeah. It's everything's connected, brother. Everything, man. It's clarity. It's, it feels great. Nobody ever regrets a workout. You got to, you know, release that. It's, you need that. You need that. It's, it's, uh, yeah. it's tuning up your car. It's, it's tuning up your engine. It's, um, it's, but it helps with, with this. For me, it's more about the mental. And during Definitely. the pandemic, I was running about six miles a day. Yeah. Is this Forrest Gump that we have on the podcast? Because, <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Can't even run one right now. And it, who can run a mile right now? Besides Jay. Besides Jay. I'll walk a mile. I'll walk it. I'll walk it up. Um, yeah, because honestly, like, developing healthy habits, developing a system outside of your work to keep you sane. Because, man, and being in entertainment, being on social media, Going, on going, on going, nonstop. You may have one day of break, you may have an hour of break, but right. there's always something going on. And that's what like I tell people, learning it now. Cause the same way, like I had to learn it a whole two years later of, oh shit, you don't always have to say yes. Oh, you don't always I have like to go that. out. I like that. Oh, yes. you don't always have to drink. And you look at a young age. How old are you, brother? Uh turn twenty eight. Oh just turn twenty eight. Young yeah. guy, man. You're a baby, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, oh. I like what you got going on at that age, man. Thank that's you, really bro. good. See y'all must <laughs> call me old over here. Nah, man, he's a baby. Stop. <laughs> no, because he's 24. He is a baby. Yeah, yeah. But I see. I can see your diaper from here, bro. <laughs> you got to hide that better. Your ass looks all fat. That looks pretty good, though. No, it, nah, never mind. I won't even say it on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like developing habits. And I think that's one of the things where I had to learn myself that you can't keep everybody happy because no. they're, they're always going to want more and more from you. What more can I take? What more can I get? Until you finally make that, like, hey, no, this stops now. And it stops now because I need to put myself first now. I got to be selfish. I have to make decisions for not just me now, but for my kids, for my family, for my loved ones. Mm -hmm. Because the more you keep on going, like, it's like a car. How you were saying the analogy earlier, you're going to have to service it at one point. Yeah. And when are you going to service it? When you have 0.5% oil? Right, right. <laughs> when, hey, when they're trying to dump out the old oil, ya no hay nada. Right. It's like, hey, like you're gonna crash, and it's gonna be hard. And once you come back from that, like depression hits. I know I had to go through that right away. Where I'm gonna take a step back because I was like, dude, like, why am I going out having fun, making everybody happy? Ando triste, güey. Yeah. La vida me está pegando durísimo on camera. I'm happy, you know, giving good advice, and then at home, like, fuck, who are you? Right. You know right. how much did you have to give up in order to be here? And I didn't like what I was giving up, and now suffering the consequences of previous actions and that's what it takes that's for me it's maturing mm -hmm. hey i'm okay i understand this is i did this i understand this is my fault not nobody else's there you go so um for you when was did you have that moment that change yes. of like who is this yes it was 2015 around like october or something i remember because i was drinking a lot mm. and I'm a DJ. I was just DJing at the time. But uh, as a DJ, you know, they treat you like a hot chick. You know, <laughs> you never have to pay for drinks. <laughs> and um, I was drinking a lot at the time. I was working at a, a strip club called Sam's Hot Pro. Shout out to Sam's. And I was holding my baby. He was about seven months, six months old at the time. And I was super hungover. Mm. And it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right at all. I was like, what am I doing? What kind of parent am I becoming? Yeah. Like, I read a quote on Instagram the other day. It said, a lot of people will die for their kids or grind for their kids or go hard for the kids. But will you get healthy for your kids? 
Yeah. I tire my little eight year old out. I love that. I love it. I'm like, oh, you're tired now? What's up, dog? I'm 41. You're not keeping up with your old man? He's like, I'm tired, dad. He needs water. <sighs> you know? When we go to Sky Zone, when we go to Chuck E. Cheese back in the days, yeah. I'm in there with him. I'm not that parent that chills out at the table and, you know, just, you know, no, I'm, I'm in there you're with active. him. I'm active with him. We play dodgeball at Sky Zone. I'm in there with Don't him. Don't tell me you hit him in the face. Hell yeah, of course. You got to teach that kid some. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, man, but I, I'm. I that's when I, that was my point right there. And yeah. and at that time, I had stopped for 4.5 years. I went with no alcohol. Um, California sober. I'll smoke weed every, every now and then. I never said that on a pod, by the way. You got the exclusive. I'll smoke here and there. Functioning stoner. Uh, fun fact that in those in, from like 2015 to 2020, I was. Pretty high in most of my videos. <laughs> Not all high, but, you know, I was, I was a little. Yeah. Um, and most of my ideas were high ideas. That was pretty cool. What's that uh, movie? If you study high, you take your test high, you get high, high scores. High scores. How high? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was it. That was my point right there, man. And and I did that for four and a half years. I relapsed on September in 2020, I, you know, after the pandemic. I'm sure a lot of people did if they yeah. were sober. <laughs> And um, I'm back at it again, man. I'm at 67 days sober. Man, congratulations. Thank you, man. I'm doing crack now, which is weird, but <laughs> I'm kidding. And I'm um, 67 days sober, and um, I feel great, man. I feel great. <laughs> they give him some time to recover right there. That was a good punchline. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm proud of you. Congrats. <laughs> I'm doing crack. I'm doing crack now. <laughs> Let me put my pipe on the side. Mess. <laughs> I like that. This is what it's all about right here. <laughs> it's kind of just, you're right. <laughs> Left hook out of nowhere. That's good. And people, yeah. I love I love what you said about being a father. You know, what what fathers would do for the kids and their families. And again, and, and I talk about this a lot more now too because I had to come to terms with what I was doing. Wasn't being around because I had to come to work, but my work turned into I got to make everybody happy. I got to make sure that I'm living that lifestyle which is going out partying you know being everywhere and so i was like what am i doing right i'm i'm progressing everybody's happy but i don't like the person that i'm becoming because now i'm putting myself into a hole where no one's gonna get me out because i'm doing it to myself until literally i had to right before i forgot exactly what podcast we were doing guys i'm not going out no more Mm. you know we're gonna record we're gonna go eat I'm going home. I'd rather be home on my own or something very, very chill, but I don't want to be up out two, three in the morning because it got bad, bro. Like, Let me make this clear, bro. Sorry to cut you off. Let me make this clear. Alcohol is dope. Yeah. Alcohol is awesome. Alcohol is fun. I'm not that sober guy that's like, hey, you shouldn't drink, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not that guy. Everything in moderation is okay, I think. Yeah. You know? Um, But... What is moderation with alcohol? And what the thing with alcohol is that it's a progressive drug. What got you drunk last week isn't going to get you drunk this week. Yeah. Last week, last week was two shots. This week is three shots and so forth. Yeah. It's a progressive drug. And, I'm, you know, enjoy it. And you're young, so your yeah. body could handle it too at the moment. Correct. But there has to be a point where like, damn, dog, this is, it's, you know. I will say this. When I took a step back and I started making better choices, things started working out better and faster. I was I was now progressing at the rate that I knew I should have been. Of course, so I'm bro. like you're in your five yeah. senses, no hangover. Yeah. You got clarity. Of yeah, course. more money in my pocket. More money in your pocket, bro. <laughs> you know now you get aroused way better, bro. <laughs> Stronger than ever. Stronger, bro. <laughs> All right, so on the and the tema de de tu hijo, your son is eight. Eight years old. I know you said at the beginning of this podcast that you know your dad was a peekaboo dad mm-hmm. every now and then. Did that, when you found out you were going to be a father, what was the emotion going through there and what were your set out, what were your, what was your plan to set out to be? What kind of father? Present. Present. Yeah. There. Yeah. There. Present, man. Um, I'm 41, man. And I could still, I still, it still hurts, you know? He recently just hurt me like last year. I invited him to a comedy show, and um, it was like a month out. And he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. You know, I'll, I'm like, all right, can you, yeah, I'll put in your calendar. Here, I'll give you tickets. Uh, well, maybe, you know, like, you can't commit to something a year from, I mean, a month from now? Uh, maybe. I'm like, all right, 
all right. And he didn't show. And I was like, damn, how, how the fuck can somebody still hurt me at 40 years old? So that shit doesn't go away. I seen something on social media where it was like a 56-year-old man that found out his dad was alive. He thought he was dead for a long time. And he found out his dad was alive. He's like, he's alive. And he just started bawling. I'm like, yeah, that never goes away. Mm-hmm. And now having my son, super bittersweet. I'm like, dude, how could you have not wanted to be there for your boy? Yeah. The the term deadbeat dad, deadbeat dad for me is... It's that, that strikes me like a broke dude. I don't know, like a broke dad that, that I don't know. For me, it's just everything's powered by love. What did uh, what did your son your what did your son change in you from the person the Jay that was before being a father? Selfless. I'm selfless now. I wasn't too selfish, but yeah, I was all about myself. Selfless and. He made me grow. If a, if a little kid doesn't inspire you to be a, more, a bigger man or a bigger person, I don't know what will, man. I don't know what will. Did he teach you what love was? <sighs> Hell yeah, man. You kidding me? What was your definition of love prior to your son? Um, I guess just being, um, being present, being there. I guess the same as now, but it was probably um, active services, you know, helping, you know, which yeah. I still like to do. But, yeah, it's, it definitely sparked something different in me. And uh, I remember there was one point where my dad was over. My son was, like, three months old. And um, I don't hold any resentment towards him. He was holding my son, and I got my son, and I was holding him. He's like, you're a good dad. And I was like, thanks. He's like, I wasn't a good dad. I was like, it's it's cool. Like, like no, like it's cool. And um, yeah, like I, I didn't like use it against him. He's like, I'm sorry, I wasn't there. I'm like, nah, it's cool. I'm like, but I did, I did um, I did feel it, you know. And then especially because I have my son, like, how could you not want to be there for your kid? Was there? Is that what you needed to hear from your dad? The no, I don't need no. I don't need no call sign, man. What it? What was that? What? There has to be that one thing that you wanted to hear from, from someone you wanted love and attention from so much. Man, we're still alive. I, I, I think as long as you're still alive and you're you're both still alive, you could rekindle something. Yeah. And at, still at this time, he he still hasn't tried to rekindle anything. So, but I love him. I don't have any resentment. I had to forgive him because for a minute I was like really holding on to that. My mom. I love you, mom. My mom is one that told me, mijo, you got to forgive. You got to forgive him. You don't have to call him and tell him I forgive you. You got to forgive him within you. And that set me free. That set me free. Forgiving. And um, I love him. I just saw him like a month ago. I went to TJ to hang out with him. He's, I know where I got my personality from. He's also very funny, man. He's a funny dude. I have nothing but love for him. It feels good to be with him. It feels good to be around my dad. It feels good to hug him and kiss him. Um, he's more like a friend though, you know, more like a friend, but, um, no resentment, man. I didn't need to hear that. It was nice. It was kind of nice to hear it, but it wasn't like, yeah, that's right. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. But yeah, I, I believe you're, you're that type of person that you tell yourself the things that you need to hear. You remind yourself of the things that you need to be reminded of. When you don't tell yourself, how do you get out of this hole? That you're in or maybe in at one point the only reason i'm bringing that up is because again we're we're on camera we're on social media we're out and about having fun with so many people but there's that one thing of us that mm, that holds us and i i heard this i've always said it before and we heard it before i've heard it so many times where my inner child just wants to be heard man mm. i i've worked so hard to get the approval from the people that i love so much and that say they love me I needed the, I'm proud of you. And I worked so hard. I worked day and night. I did everything possible until I one day realized, like, man, I just, I may, I may never get it. Right. And you should be okay with that. Yeah. What sure. are you, gonna, you know, what are you going to do? Like, you should be okay with that, you know? Once again, just you know, hold, don't hold on to anything. 
You should be okay with that. Leave it in God's hands or whatever you believe in. Yeah, your oh, what was the other one? Your inner child. Your inner child wants to be heard. Your teenage self wants revenge, but your adult mm. self wants peace. Mm, it's beautiful. So your road to healing is just never ending, right? Because there's always something that happened. We're like, man, like when I was younger, this happened, this happened. Mm. But now as fathers, right? I hope one day everybody gets to feel that feeling of being a father. Oh, man. I wish that upon everybody. Yeah, and, and I wish you guys become the father you always wanted and you wanted and you become the father you always needed in your life because that becomes so much responsibility and so many ups and downs that until you're there, then you realize exactly what kind of father you could be because we have so many opportunities. My dad's a hardworking man. Was he present? No, he wasn't. But because he was starting a business and working for us, I didn't understand. That was so... I, so much anger, like, dude, why am I in a soccer game? I'm getting drove by my, my teammates' dad, and all their parents are cheering their mom and telling how good I am. And I got to tell my dad about the game because he's not there. Mm. But my mom was there, right? And that's where one of the things where now it's like, you know, my little son, he's four, going to be four, started soccer too. All right, cool. We got to go. I got to make it. It's awesome. And it's so tough because it's Sunday, 8 in the morning. In the morning. Oh, my God. They always start them so early, dog. I'm like, who the hell wants to wake up this early oh, on a Sunday? Come on, Caucasians. <laughs> switch it up. Shit. There's brown people playing. Man, I wanted to enjoy those Sunday leagues with all the all the old people, all crudos and stuff. Vali. Ayer, güey. No, man. What's up, peda? Yeah, bro. But that's good that you do it, man. It's sacrifice. Um... Once again, as soon as they're born out of the womb, it's not about us anymore, bro. It's no. not. It's not, bro. When I'm with my son, I stop production, bro. I work hard when I'm not with him. And when I'm with him, I am with him. My phone's not in sight. I am with him. I engage with him. I taught my son how to walk at 10 months. I taught him how to ride a bike at four and a half with no training wheels. I taught him how to throw a football, catch a football. I taught, I taught him plays. Now that he's in football, he did a tackle. He's, his season's about to end. I taught him how to shoot a basketball, how to throw a baseball, catch a baseball, bat. I taught him how to ride rollerblades. I taught him how to ride a scooter. I taught him, I, I'm there. I'm there. I show him how, oh, we ride mountain bikes too. We also go mountain bike riding, Caucasian shit. And um, he eats shit, get back up. I taught him how to be relentless, I guess, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he has a cool little, he has a strong little attitude. He's a little Virgo. He has a strong little attitude. He'll get, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll eat shit. He'll get up and be like... <laughs> He gets mad, not like, mm -hmm. you know, he's in pain. He gets mad. I told you I don't want to go down that hill. I'm like, Papa, you're good. Are you good? And sometimes, you know, it's hard not to laugh as a parent. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. You've had those moments <laughs> where he's like, you've got this little man toughening up on you and you try not to laugh, you know? Yeah. And I hold it in. The baby's mom checks me out all the time, too. Shout out to the baby's mom. She's a great mom. Thank you, Lisette. Um, I'd be like, hey, buddy. Hey, you good? He's like, yeah. I'm like, are you going to quit or are you going to get back on? I'm gonna get back on. So yeah, so I teach him how to be relentless, and that's just being present. And once again, that's something I didn't have, and I I had to learn with time. And I think I was a late bloomer. And actually, I know I was a, a late bloomer. I remember I'd see these kids at 19, 20 starting a business, but then I'd look at their dad, and they had a solid ass present dad that was doing it as well. You know, because kids don't do what they what you tell them to do; they do what they see you do. You know. You became the dad you always needed and wanted. Yes. And I'm only with him 20%. I get him on weekends, but those 48 hours, I am with him. And I'm excited about next week because he, he gets the week off. So I'm going to have him four sleepovers. So oh. when I'm with him. I'm with him. And he's, he's gravitating towards me more, which is something I wanted. Because every time he spent the night at my house, he spent the night with grandma, you know, which is great because they also have their, their, their relationship. They, they bond. Yeah. But now he wants to sleep with dad. Yeah, he wants to sleep over at dad's house. And he's super Caucasian too when he sleeps, man. <laughs> Dad, can you YouTube some ocean sounds? Like, you want to listen to ocean sounds? Yeah. Can we also put a nightlight? Like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, Chad. Okay. We used to have gunshots, police sirens. Yeah, I that was your. <laughs> <laughs> can I prend the little. Pack the loose way. What's what we did mean? Man, it, fatherhood is one of the best things in the world. Yeah. And like how we said earlier, if you're a part of it, I know Chris is a new father. and Hey, congrats, Chris. Know. Hell yeah. I was a papi, papa de los pollitos. Hell yeah. Oh, I already knew that. My bad. I thought it was another Chris. There's a lot of Chris's. Hell yeah, man. Don't be a sour apple with your son. 
and, and it's one of those things where, like, how you were saying, and um, I'm trying not to, trying to be serious with my kid, even though, like, I know if I laugh, it's gonna break character. Oh, dog, it's so hard. Yeah, it's <laughs> shout out to their their mom, and he's like, dude, can't be always nice. I'm like, dude, that was funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Cause even yeah. like we're oh man, Target's the worst for me. I'm I'm a yes man. We go to Daddy, just one toy. I don't have this. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Yeah. And then get home. You bought him enough. I he bought it. Ah uh, yeah. I I stopped that man. I stopped that. He's so fortunate. He's so fortunate. The last three Christmases and birthdays, I'll ask him, hey buddy, what do you want for your birthday? He'd be like, um, um. I'm like, bro, you know why you don't want? Why you don't know what you want, right? Because you have everything. He's like, uh, and I'm like, dude, you're blessed. What does that mean? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> He's funny, man. He's hilarious. There was one time I was like, buddy, you know, as far as school, man, just stay focused on the work. You know, don't forget about girls right now. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. You know, just stay focused on the work. Just forget, you know, don't worry about the ladies. He's like, you should do the same, dad. I was like, wow, <laughs> look at the comedic weight on this kid. He's funny, man. He's funny. Man, um, all right, so really quick, everybody sees your relationship with Concrete, mm. that dynamic duo, that, like, brotherhood type of thing that, like, f- it feels and it seems like you guys known each other for so long. Mm. But to my understanding, son como unos cuatro, cinco años? Like three, four, four years? Off of a video shoot, you guys locked eyes? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Got my research, Chris. I'm telling you, dog. Frankie J video shoot, yeah. Uh, I strongly believe that iron sharpens iron. You got to hang out with people that elevate you. You know, shout out to Khan. Super proud of him. He's selling out every show that he does. Um, He's, you want people to get you out of that comfort zone and level you up. He's made me do a lot of different stuff that I was uncomfortable with and I'm super happy that I did. He, uh, you know, made me, you know, he inspired me to do characters on on videos. He inspired me to... um, go on stage in front of seven to 10,000 people and do a character, you know, uh, insp- he inspired me to get out of my comfort zone, which I believe that if you don't have a friend that does that, you know, you gotta actually surround yourself around people. Yeah, like and, that. and that's why I bring that up because friends, friends could either make you or break you. So yeah. throughout your journey, especially right now, did you see like your friend, your friend group changing or like what, like what's that circle internal circle for you? Like, what does that look like? Who does it, who does it consist of? Um, for right, I mean, I don't know, my mom, <laughs> you know, um, my immediate team, my cousin, uh, JR, True Hustle Podcast. Um, it, it's a small circle, you know, because a lot of people come and go too, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and I like to have my own thing, you know, me and Concrete, you know, we're a force. We were a force, we are, we are a force, but, um, but, you know, it's all about, you know, it's always doing your own thing too. You know, I always tell my son, baby, work with the world, but always do your own thing. Work with everybody, but always do your own thing. That's what attracts everything. That's where you add your value. hundred percent. Yeah. When it's like the pot, like you come to the table and what'd you bring to the table? Right. Not, <laughs> did you just bring a plato to get from everybody's and leave yeah. home with, you know, and that's one of the things where it, it makes sense to people that are going through it and have been through it already where it's like, yo, think about it as a pot, like, you got to bring something to the table, mm. whether it's a dish, whether it's una bebida, whether it's a, a postre, whatever it is. Bring something. Don't just bring a, a plate. Yeah, Get you, from everybody's in. Can't show up to the barbecue without a case of Modelo's, dog. Yeah. Pacificos, at least. <laughs> but if my dad's there, a Bud Light, you know. Like oh, chicken. still? Wow. Oh, no, son agua. Son <laughs> vitamina. Because that's, again, like, I, I told this to somebody the other day where it's like, we're so relatable right now to everybody because we look like them. Mm. We sound like them. We come from the same places as them. It's just we're in a platform where we are excelling right now because we we need to be seen. We need to be heard. We want to be heard. But it doesn't come easy, right? Like, there's things, there's places where we may not fit the, the, per, the picture. We may not fit the style. We may not fit the conversation. Right. I am for who I am for. And our podcast your comment is how you said for the people that are that like it yeah it may not work for everybody right it may not work for you right now but maybe down the line who knows maybe it does maybe it doesn't right right you know it's funny um that's crazy uh going going back to Khan, he told me that once i told him i was like bro i want to make stuff 
that's for that's international for everybody, you know, not just Latinos. You're like, bro, but we're Latino, bro. Let's just do stuff for the people that support us right now. I was like, shit, you're right. So it that's is, where, yeah. it is a wave. Yeah, he's like, let's do those bookies. Let's do rebels. Those are all his stuff he wrote. Those are all his characters that he wrote. And I'm like, damn, you're right. And that's where the core is, the people that back you up. And then from there, you expand. Yeah, building that community where no matter what you bring, no matter what you do, what you showcase, like, because they love you and love how you do things, I'm going to support them. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna be there. I'm going to support them. And, and man, it, it trickles back to what we said at the beginning. It's just a matter of you're great, just the world needs to see how great you are. Mm. It's just a matter of time, right? Like, this is where friends come into a place. I know my friends are badass. I know they're funny. I know they're gifted. I know they're talented. I know this, but I need the world to see this. Right. Because if I see this, I know you're talented and you have a gift. I need the world to see it now because I need, I need them to see it. And I need you to get that reassurance of, Hey, you are great, but you can't hear it from me anymore. Cause I tell you too many times you'll hear it from this person. You never met in your life. And, oh dude, they told me that. And I don't know. It hit me. But yeah. see, way, <laughs> it's like our parents, our mom tells us the, the details every time, but I'm not going to listen, but I'm going to hear it from the random person I never met in my life. And all of a sudden they told me the same thing. And yeah. I see. No, yeah. Tiene, right. Tiene razón, tiene razón. And yeah. you know, it's one of those things where, um, life happens and you come to realization that, you know, some of the answers have always been there. It's just, it was a matter of time that you were, you started to look that way. Right. You know what I mean? Because the relationship with your mom, I'm sure your mom te ha dado consejos a morir. Yeah. Is there one that like sticks in your head? Dime con, dime con quién te juntas, and I'll tell you who you are, homie. Yeah. Is there one that that she told you that never made any sense? Um. Uh. No, they're usually pretty. They're usually pretty on point. She has some good dichos. Or is there one? Tells. Is there one that she told you at a younger age, and it took you up until now, this stage of her life, to kind of realize? Or later time. Right, this, this, what I just said right now, you hang out with shit, you're going to get shit on you, you know? Damn. <laughs> Our, what, what is something of value that is not materialistic that you have in your life right now? My son. Yeah. 100%. Everything. Core of everything. Mm. Yeah. 100%. All right. The uh, tema de, de la familia, basically... If you could put it into words, what does your mother mean to you? The love of your mother mean to you? It's everything. She's everything. She's uh, my biggest fan, my biggest supporter, um, my rock. Everything, man. Man, I love that. And has there has there been a time, has there recently or before where you thought you wouldn't ever get out of that hole? Um, yeah, I mean, nobody talks about it much or, you know, brings light to it, but yeah, I went through a depressed stage about a couple of months ago and yeah, it feels like that when you're going through that, you know? Yeah. And you're talking to somebody that's never gone through that. I probably have like, I probably had like three anxiety attacks my whole life, you know? So I was like, yo, what the hell is this? And I even apologized like to God, like, yo, there's nothing wrong. You know, I have, you know, I'm not, I'm not struggling. I'm not, I'm healthy. I have a roof over my head. Yeah. Why am I, I'm sorry that I feel that with this way. Please help me. But I felt like I wasn't going to get out of that hole, but I fought and I pursued it, happiness. And, and mm. yeah, that's one of the other reasons I had to, had to quit alcohol because, you know, alcohol brings your endorphins up. What's going to happen the next day? Yeah. Nobody oh. posts that on their stories, dog. No. <laughs> Nobody posts a, you know, I am feel like fucking shit right now. Depressed. Why am I here? You know? Nobody nobody posts that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I fought, man. They only go as deep as, oh, I'm crudo, drinking sweater right now. But it's yeah. like, no, man. It's just, you know, everybody fights demons. Everybody has their, their bad sides and their bad moments. Is yeah. How do you deal with that? You know what I mean? So when you have those moments now, now that you've, dealt with depression and anxiety what gets you through those moments now how do you uh go about it execution 
And uh, working out, man, it feels great. I encourage everybody. It's the hardest shit to do. I get it. Working out sucks. It's not sexy. It's the hardest shit to do. You're going to be sitting at the parking lot at the gym for 15 minutes before you get out. But I promise you, nobody ever regrets a workout. That's You got to tune up that engine every day. I promise you, it'll make you feel better. And then you can look like this. Nah. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. I got to diet more. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, here are the abs. <laughs> Did it hire you for that new uh, catalog of skims? Yeah, that was me right there. How did you know? Hey, man, I was taking a wild guess. That was pretty sus, but I like it. <laughs> All right. So, um, there. what would you tell a young Jay Valentino, a young a eight-year-old Jay Valentino going through life at the beginning? Um, don't overthink. You know, don't overthink execute um you can't keep everybody happy you know don't try to um yeah don't overthink execute uh face your fears you know if you're nervous do it nervous mm. yeah and then taking this from my homeboy uh jose he asked this question the other day and i want to ask you what would you tell yourself in 10 years from now what message do you want him to know who Yourself. Myself. What would I tell myself 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. You did it, dog. Fuck. Look at all these movies, dog. You did it. That's what I want to tell myself. Look at all the stuff you accomplished. It's amazing. You sold out shows in arenas and were in movies with Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. You did it. Can you say you're proud of yourself? I have to, man. I have to own that. Yes, I am. I am. And, I, and it's a good... Good timing, by the way, because you would ask me this about a year ago. I would have been like, nah, you know, but yes, you have to be. You have to look back every now and then and every now and then and be like, yo, that's pretty good. So, yes, you know, I know that hundreds of thousands of people interacting with you and 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 following you and supporting you. It's not from out of nowhere. You know, yeah. it's through hard work, fails, repetition, repetition, failing again and staying consistent. So, yes. You got to be proud of yourself. You know, satisfied? Meh. Yeah. You know, but happy, yeah. Stay happy, never satisfied. That's my model for sure. Man, I love that. And to pretty much wrap it up, man. What can we expect from you? Or what's going to plan? Are you ending the, how are you ending the year? And what's coming in? in the More shows. Uh, two movies coming out. Orchata and Oat Milk. One with Rancho Humilde. More shows in Southern California, all over the United States. Uh, more movies and more podcasts with this guy right here. <laughs> we got to do it, bro. Man, thank you for taking the time, bro. And I appreciate you for uh, how you said earlier, these are the, the days with your with your kid. And to make time for us, I'm, I'm always blessed and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And For sure, dog. Man, I'm super proud of you. Thank you, I'm brother. super proud of the person you are, the father you are, from one father to another. And likewise, that, brother. Thank you, man. And and that's one of the things that I won't, I won't ever say lightly because – Seeing the work ethic, seeing everything you're doing from where you started to where you're at now and what's to come, it's something that you have to be able to realize that at one point of you're an inspiration to many other people that may not tell you all the time or may not mm -hmm. say it at all. But, you know, people like myself, I, you inspire me to even work harder and be better. My brother, and, that's what it's all about. So I appreciate you, man. My G. Thank you, man. man another you one. You Thank you, man. Toast to life. You already know. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Shout out to Kanye for letting us record here one more time, baby. Let's go.